It's Arrakis versus Arachnid. Which one are you going to see, Dune Part 2 or Netflix's Spaceman? It's all coming up right now. See it, we're skipping. See it, we're skipping. See it, we're skipping. Welcome to another episode of Cedar Skip It. I'm your host, Patrick Beatty, and I am so excited to be talking about Dune Part 2. And before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about the status of the theatrical movie experience. We've seen so many opportunities for people to check out stuff, whether it be digital, whether it be streaming, uh, day and date releases for films, not really knowing whether the theatrical experience is going to survive in the next coming years. A lot of times when you're watching something on streaming, it can end up giving you the wrong intention of what that director's overall vision was. Whether you have the right sound or the right image is critical on how that director's vision is gonna be shown to you. And I have to say that with Dune Part 2, this is one that you absolutely must see in the theater to get the entire experience of what an epic this film is. First of all, this is made for the big screen. So if you're going in, go with some friends and make sure that you're going with the biggest screen and the best sound quality possible. Martin Scorsese famously said a couple years back that a lot of films lately have just become theme park attractions, roller coaster rides, and not really having any substance to it. To me, I feel director Denis Villeneuve has given us the opportunity to see a balance between art versus spectacle. When I first saw Doom Part 1, I really wasn't entirely enamored by what I was seeing. The story seemed a little bit more like it was setting up a lot of stuff without giving you satisfactory payoffs. We didn't really know if there was gonna be a Dune Part 2 until that film came out. And now that we have this and we're able to see what was actually cooking that Dune Part 1 set up for Dune Part 2, this is really one of the best sci-fi films to come out in this past decade. Timothy Chalamet absolutely crushes it as Paul Atreides. I've seen character growth in him when it comes to Wonka, his previous work, but in this, he completely transforms into the role, and I loved his character. We have Rebecca Ferguson returning as his mom, who becomes the high priestess of Arrakis. I love her character growth. I love seeing the story play out between the Southern Fremen and the Northern Fremen, and the possibility of Paul Atreides being their savior and their messiah. There's a lot to say about religious fundamentalism in this film, and I think they do an incredible job of towing the line to make it so that he might be a hero or he might be a villain. It really comes up to your interpretation. And speaking of villains, we have to talk about Austin Butler. He absolutely steals the show with his character when it comes to his physicality, when it comes to the way that he's fighting, to how he's even interacting with other characters. I feel that he is a showstopper. It's something that I didn't expect with Austin Butler, especially when you saw Elvis before, and in this he does an incredible job. Also teased in the first film, but not necessarily explored, is Javier Bardem's character, who's kind of a religious zealot who is destined to try to bring out Timothy Chalamet's character to be this messiah. Not only is there a lot of humor to his character, but there's a lot of growth and exploration to the world through him. The way we introduce Arrakis, the Fremen, and how their culture works is all through him, and he does a tremendous job, especially with the language, which, by the way, completely made up for this film. The film scale is something that I've really not seen in a long time. What, whether you're looking at a worm or you're looking at just huge planetary ships dropping down onto the planet, the scale is incredible. And every VFX shot looks completely real. You're completely immersed into this world. And that is such an incredible job from the cinematographer, Greg Fraser, who really, I don't think there's a better cinematographer working right now. He gave us jaw-dropping cinematography in this. Also, the sound design and the sound mixing. When you're riding one of these worms, you feel completely immersed. A sandworm, it, it honestly does feel like a roller coaster ride or like you're just surfing on a sand wave. The way that they portray everything in this when it comes to sound design really is going to be winning a ton of awards when it comes Oscar season next year. I know we already, we haven't even done this year for Oscars, but I'm already talking about what's going to be happening happening with it, because Dune's gonna clean house with many, many awards, especially in the technical aspect. All in all, this is basically a new epic. If you were in a theater and you watched The Lord of the Rings and you felt that epic scale of what Peter Jackson was able to accomplish, you will be very happy leaving the theater after Dune Part Two because it is immersive, it is an epic, and there are some things in this that honestly I've never seen put to screen so far. So if you're going to this, make sure that you're checking it out in theaters. I would say that you need to check out Dune Part One because it sets up so much in a way Dune Part 1 sets up Dune Part 2 so that it can dead sprint right into the story and give you maybe one of the most fun experiences that you will have in the theater this year. So whether or not it's a see it or skip it, it's obviously a see it.
Next up, we have the new Netflix film starring Adam Sandler as perhaps the loneliest man in space. He's on a mission trying to discover a certain particle and see what is coming from that, while also dealing with the fact that he's not talking with his wife, who's played by Carrie Mulligan, who's down on Earth. Little does he know, a spider comes on board, or an alien that looks exactly like a spider, played by Paul Dano. And rather than this spider wanting to explore space with them, he'd like to sit Adam Sandler down in the therapy chair and talk to him about his feelings and how his relationship with his wife is going. Now, when I saw the trailer, I was actually really interested with this because the premise is fascinating. I do like the idea that we're looking into this man and his situation while he's up in space alone, his mental stability within whether he's actually seeing this spider or not. But in the end, I don't feel like Spaceman does enough to even make you feel interested in the film. Don't get me wrong, Adam Sandler is a great actor, and I love when he takes these serious roles because you get to see him stretch his acting capabilities. If you've not watched Uncut Gems, please do yourself a favor and check that one out. But he's not given a lot, and poor Carrie Mulligan is given next to nothing in this story to where I really don't understand why these actors chose to be a part of this film. To me, it's boring, it's sluggish, not a lot happens in the narrative, and I don't think the actors' performances were utilized very well. Carrie Mulligan is albeit wasted in this performance. But that's not to say a slow burn wouldn't be for you, but whether you should see this or skip it this weekend, I would skip it. So if you've seen Dune Part 2, let me know what you think. Make sure you put a comment down below. Make sure you're subscribing to ABC4's YouTube channel so you can get all of the latest ABC4 See It or Skip It's. And of course, abc4.com, click on the Shows tab and go to See It or Skip It to see our interviews, reviews, and news. Once again, I'm Patrick Beatty. Thank you so much as always for watching, and I will see you at the next review.